My name is Richard Selby from Coric Group Technical Support and in this video I'd like to go through the process of colorizing points in a point cloud in Trimble Realworks using photos that have been taken with an external source. Now there's really two routes within Realworks to do this. One is to use the real color tool where you have panoramic 360 degree type images which can be manually or automatically matched to corresponding scans from a scanner such as the, the TX8 or the TX6 or even the X7. Now the other route uh, which is to take discrete uh, images which don't cover the whole point cloud or the whole scan and apply those to a section of the cloud and that's done using the image matching tool and that's what I'm going to cover in this video. Here I have my RealWorks project open and the first thing to do really is to segment out the portion of cloud that you wish to match the image onto so you can colorize points on the cloud with photo or, or photos. When you're working over a large area it's quite quick and easy, it's just a case of picking four match points to match the photo to the scan data. When you're working close in to a small area and there's depth changes it's a bit more tricky. So I'll show that scenario here now. First thing to do then from the home ribbon go to import image and bring in the images that you wish to use and this works best if they're in uh, landscape orientation. I've got an images tab now and the images are listed. Go on to the imaging ribbon, image matching tool is greyed out so I'm going to pick the first image that I wish to work on. Let me just turn the light bulb on, check it's the one I want to use. Yep. So press the image matching function button, get a picture of the imported image or photo appear and of course we've got our cloud here. When it comes to finding matches between the photo and the cloud you've got two options, you've got points and you've got the option to add line references as well which can be very useful in a situation like this where we've got lots of linear objects and various depth changes occurring in the data. So perhaps I'll start off by putting some linear references. So I'm choosing the line marker option and it's going to put a line marker from here to here in the scan data. and likewise in the photo. And I could put another line going up here it's just another click there and the same here So I've got a couple of linear references in that area. Uh, this part of the wall is protruding so that's going to cause some scaling issues for trying to apply a photo like this that's taken relatively close to the cloud area. So I'm just going to look for a, a, an easy reference location. So I've got these numbers here I can use as a reference. Let's rotate this round a little bit. Perhaps go from here. To here. And the same on the photo. See if I have any 
references over here. So I've got this pattern on the garage door here that I can use as another linear reference. I can also place some some point references. So go to the point marker mode. So place one here and here on the brick course as well. another one here and another one here so when some references have been placed between the photo or the image and the cloud at least four required at this point you can press the preview button and it will attempt to match the two together and then we have a slider that enables us to merge the cloud and the projected photo together so that it's possible to look at how good that that match is performing now the observant amongst you will notice that the door has actually changed since uh, the scan was taken place and the photo was taken so although the door frame is consistent the uh, uh, the door itself is a different door so merging in and out like this uh, I can see that by and large the the match between the photo is pretty good it's pretty good I'm just looking at the edges on the, the right hand side here as I click and drag this slider up and down it seems to be in the same place uh, I'm looking at this this reference down here and again that appears to be that appears to be good if you need to add more markers uh, you can do using the buttons here and also using the uh, the buttons here you can reset or delete some of the markers or reorder them uh, the sequence in which they were acquired okay so uh, once we're we're happy with the preview then it's possible to press apply and that will then complete the matching of the um, photo to the to the data to then colorize the cloud using that photo uh, you'd go to the coloring button and as it says it's going to reproject the image color on the points now of course this is based on visual line of sight you can see here that we're going to have oops let's go back to the preview uh, there will be points on the reverse side of this wall here that won't be uh, in the line of sight and therefore wouldn't be colorized correctly so to colorize those you'd need to use a, a photo taken from uh, a different a different angle okay so i'll go to the coloring and it warns me that this uh, is a definitive operation and it may take a long time but of course that depends on the uh, the area and number of points and so on that are covered by the, the photo but I'll click yes on that for it to uh, start the coloring process so the colorization process is finished I'm just going to close the tool and turn off photo there
Okay, so as we can see, the portion of the cloud that was covered by the photo um, has now been colorized. Okay, the, the door is a bit of a red herring. It is a different door, although the uh, similarity is, uh, is very close. Okay, so I'm in true color display mode here. Moving around the image, having a look at the uh, at the match. So here I can toggle to just another display color. Go back to the true color. Perhaps I'll take a look at the lettering over here. Yeah, match seems pretty good. Okay, I'm happy with that. So this is a good example of where you, you have a photo taken quite close to the subject cloud and you've got lots of depth changes in the scan area that's covered by the photo. And as I said, it's important to put on those extra matching lines and, and point markers uh, as widely spaced as you can around the photo area and to place markers at different depths uh, in the cloud that relate to the photo. Again, uh, if you're doing a wider area, it, it's much easier uh, to do that. And when you're close in, you have to be <clears throat> a bit more uh, precise and particular about where you place your markers. So if I was happy with that one, I would then be able to go back to the matching tool and select another photo to apply. So here I've got the base of the door, the base of the wall and the garage. So I'd be able to then add that colorization by matching that photo to the, to the cloud here and continuing on. Now if I didn't want to um, colorize the points I've already colorized then in that case what I'd really need to do is segment out just the area that I do wish to colorize because otherwise this this color here will will overwrite some of what was colorized previously if that's just applied to the same cloud. Okay, I hope that little video was useful uh, on the image matching tool. It allows you to match uh, any image that you've got, match it up to the uh, to the point cloud or the scan data using uh, matching features that you can identify in both, and then colorizing the cloud. If you've got any questions about the process, then uh, please don't hesitate to get in touch on the email address shown. And thanks for watching.